this is running absolutely parallel to Darwin's theory of evolution. This is fifteen thousand years ago. Evolutionary memory is deciding that you only take human form. So he looked into his evolutionary memory and he says, first we were fish, he even mentions this. Unless there is some significant change in the solar system, you cannot evolve physically. Charles Darwin, 152 years ago, he was born 200 years ago, but when he was 52, he propounded his theory of evolution. Fifteen thousand years ago, Adi Yogi said this. I want you to care… look at this carefully, if you know… You know something about Darwin's theory of evolution? Yes. No, just about the fact that you were a monkey, not just that <laughs> Something more? <laughs> that one knowledge is good, but… Adi Yogi said, the first form of life on this planet was in water. Well, you have heard about this in so many different ways. People told you there are nine avatars. Yes? Can you tell me what are the nine avatars? Matsya avatar? No, no, don't jump. Kurma avatar? Varaha? No, no, no. Narasimha? Vamana? Parashurama? Rama? Krishna? Buddha? Nine. Now, uh, you must understand this. Right now people have started looking at these names as people. Look at them as qualities. First form of life was fish. Darwin also agrees, it was in the water. Second development on the planet is amphibious life, kurma avatara. Half in the water started picnicking on the land, then many other creatures in between, but the next significant life is mammalian life. Among the mammals, the first one is the boar. Even today, you will see, you have wild boar in Rajasthan? Oh. Wild boar or a pig is the most physical animal of all the animals you will find. In the sense, it is so strongly rooted in its body that uh, even, you know, if uh, people go to hunt a wild boar or something, you can't kill it easily. Where we are, we are next to the rainforest. There are tribal villages. These boys who go to school, I am talking about ten, twelve year old boys, when they're coming back, if they see a deer, they will take sticks, they'll just pick up sticks somewhere, attack the deer and kill it. I'm saying school boys with a stick. That's how other mammals are made. You also, one knock on your head, you'll fall dead. But this is not the way a wild boar is. It doesn't die easily because it's so rooted in its physicality. Even today, if you f see somebody overly physical, you say he is like a pig. No? <laughs> because pig represents excessive physicality. So the first mammal he is describing is a boar or a pig. What is next? Narasimha, half man, half animal. Next is Vamana, a dwarfed man. Next is a full-fledged man who is Parashurama, but emotionally volatile, so volatile he lopped off his own mother's head. Next is Rama, a peaceful man. Next is Krishna, a loving man. Next is Buddha, a meditative man. Next is supposed to be a mystical man. Everybody's claiming it's me, it's me, it's me. <laughs> you need to understand, these are not people. 
those people are representative of those qualities that we are talking about. So, life evolved like this. This is running, believe me, this is running absolutely parallel to Darwin's theory of evolution. This is fifteen thousand years ago. This, he did not go to Galapagos Islands and put things under microscope and look. He sat there with his eyes closed and saw that if you go deep enough into this, there is an evolutionary memory in this. If there was no evolutionary memory, suppose you're a man and you eat a watermelon, it becomes a man after some time, yes? Now you're a woman, if you eat a watermelon, it'll become a woman. If a cow eats a watermelon, it becomes a cow. Why this is happening is, there is something called as evolutionary memory and genetic memory here. Evolutionary memory is deciding that you only take human form, not suddenly you eat a smart watermelon and you got confused and became a cow, such thing will never happen. Okay? And there is genetic memory which clearly says, this is a woman's body, eat whatever you want, this will only become a woman, not a man. Because the genetic memory is intact. Why people are fighting against genetic engineering is because of this. Once you meddle the plants and then the animals, then it'll come to you. Then you don't know. If they do some mistake, you will become half man, half animal once again. <laughs> we don't know what'll happen <laughs> So that is the resistance for genetic engineering because once you start meddling with the basic material, you don't know what'll happen because we have not figured it completely. So he looked into his evolutionary memory and he says, first we were fish, then we were this, 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 all the nine things and now you're here. Now that you're here, you've taken on this human form, if you want to evolve from here, you can only consciously evolve. Your physical evolution is over. For this, there is an entire mathematic as to why your physical evolution is over. There are many, many aspects of it. I will not go into the mathematics because a few ladies just shook their head, no, we don't want mathematics <laughs> <laughs> but there is no mysticism without mathematics. <laughs> to put it very simply, the nature of who you are right now is a consequence, a complex amalgamation of memory, of variety of memories that you have. You have this kind of body because of evolutionary and genetic memory. You like this, you dislike that because of various levels of unconscious, subconscious, karmic and other types of memory. You have no control over it, what you like and what you dislike most of the time. You will have to strive hard to rise above that because memory is determining everything about you. So, when we say evolution, in a way we are talking about the play of memory and the building of experience and growing into various levels. So he is saying if you're willing to strive, you can transcend everything that limits you. Only thing is your physical body is not designed to change anymore because with this solar system, he even mentions this, unless there is some significant change in the solar system, you cannot evolve physically. They naturally asked, you have grasped so much but our brains are struggling. Can we grow this a little bit? He said no in a different way but today modern neuroscientists are saying this. Your brain consumes twenty percent of the energy generated in this body. Though it is only this much, I'm sorry, am I showing too small? Okay. Though it is only this much and it is lightweight because mostly it's air. In spite of that, it consumes twenty percent of the energy generated in your body. The rest of the body, so much 
consumes remaining eighty percent. So if you want to increase your intelligence, whatever, if you increase the size of the brain, the amount of power needed for that, body cannot provide. So you cannot increase the size of your brain. Another way of making this happen is, you can pack more neurons into the same size, then you may have sparkling intelligence, but there will be enormous cross-connections and confusion all the time, and you will become super restless. Some of you may have children like this at home. They're super restless, they're intelligent, but they're all over the place because too many neurons are packed in their brain. Now immediately you take them to a doctor, they will give them one of the three alphabets, ADD, ADY, uh, XYZ, something, something, MNOP, No, you should not start medication. What you need to do is, if you have a child like that, you must take time, make them walk in the nature, take them for three-day trek in the desert, go and swim somewhere, expose them to nature and lots of physical activity. The body will manage itself, it will eliminate the extra neurons that are there and come, it, come to its own balance. If you medicate, you must understand any medicine that you take has no intelligence to go, th go to a specific place, it goes everywhere. They can't just dull some part of the brain, they'll dull the whole brain and the whole body. You'll destroy a child's life very early simply because somebody is eager to give pharmaceuticals. Anyway, so he offered this dimension that if you're willing to strive, you can transcend all limitations. Whatever the limits nature has set for us, every one of those things can be crossed if only you're willing to strive. This is what Adi Yogi conveyed to them and then started giving out methods how to transcend their present limitations. People just believe this is how we are, even now, right? This is how we are. No, 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 this is not how you are. Unfortunately, this is how you made yourself to be. But you can also make yourself to be more and more and more in many different ways. Have you seen in the same day, sometimes you're wonderful, sometimes you're horrible? Hello? Yes. Lot of horrible people <laughs> So I'm saying, you can… you always think it happened to you. No, no, you can make yourself wonderful, you can make yourself horrible, isn't it? So you can be in limitations, you can be beyond limitations. So for the first time he brought this to humanity and then he spoke about how every creature on this planet has evolved beyond its own limitations with striving over a period of time. Or in other words, he propounded the theory of evolution fifteen thousand years ago.